Hey everybody, welcome to the D. Louise book series. I'm Christina, K-R-I-S-T-I-N-A. This is where we read books and talk about books. No special effects, no theme music, none of that other stuff going on here. It's real simple. And today we are talking about my absolute favorite magazine in the entire world. There is no other magazine like this, and I am planning on doing on, on doing a show and tell, and we will compare them. But this magazine, we are up to April 2009. There is no better. There is no better. And I'm going to do a demonstration video in a couple days. Have to look for that. But this is April 2009. Romantic Times Book Review, and this is the most awesome magazine in the world because you can still read it today, and you can still get reading choices. You can still find authors in it. You can still look up authors. There is no better than this magazine. This magazine covered historical romance, inspirational, mainstream fiction, suspense mystery, contemporary romance, paranormal, urban fantasy, sci-fi, and erotica. There was no other magazine that covered all these topics and covered as many of them as romantic times. Nobody did over 250. They also did Harlequins. All of these Harlequins. All of them. And while I was gathering my notes for this, and I picked it up, and I'm like, oh, I completely, absolutely forgot. Are you a general hospital pan? Are you a series person like me? Do you like to have the progression of character from episode to episode or book to book? Are you watching Star Trek Next Generation with me on Fridays? Watching character progression from episode to episode? Are you a General Hospital fan? Did you know that she wrote some books? And um, her and Bradford Anderson wrote a couple books. I think one of them was together. I'm not exactly sure. But we will get there. We have uh, Shannon, Royal Blood, a conspiracy to assassinate the king binds two, together two people to the death. Renee, the beautiful and dangerous French princess, Michael Devereux, the fearless and ambitious Lord Lieutenant of Ireland. Ooh, looks good. Sherilyn Kenyon, we will be talking about her. If I could figure out how to erase all the writing I did in these, I would. And we talked about this book in the last um, thing, I think. Let me just double check. But anyways, we did... We are talking about... Carolyn Hennessy. Where is it? Carolyn Hennessy. General Hospital. God, these pictures are so bad. I am sorry. I am very low tech. Very sorry. Catching up with Carolyn, the sassy soap star takes on tweens. She plays an attorney on General Hospital. Jason's attorney. Ah, uh, look at young Steve Burton and Sunny. Soap fans are used to seeing heroines swoon over their heroes and throw caution to the wind to get their man, just like in romance novels. But Carol Hennessy's Diane brings a different type of attitude to General Hospital, where she plays, plays lawyer to Mob King 
all around Lothario Sunny Corinthos. She's a normal woman, smart, kinda sassy, says Hennessy. And most importantly, she does not fall for Sunny. A formidable feat considering Sunny, portrayed by Maurice Bernard, has been the leading man on this soap for 15 years. Now he's been the leading man on this soap for 30 years. The soap just celebrated their 30th, 60th anniversary. And she wrote Pandora. There, down there. Um, I don't know if it says with the books. Pandora gets lazy. Uh, let's see. Pandora gets lazy. Um, writing and selling the series was relatively easy for Hennessy, who conceived of the idea while taking a writing workshop. At the suggestion of a visiting author monitoring the class, she turned a short story featuring Pandora into a novel by 1,000 words a day. Six weeks later, I had a novel. Interesting. I can read this magazine yesterday, tomorrow, and the next day. It is always, always interesting, current. You can find new authors. You cannot do this. You could spend hours on Goodreads. But, um, so this, where is my paper here? Hi. Jane Feather. Now, I used to own all these. She did a seven bride, seven brother thing. I really need to get those back. I'm sorry I gave those away. Um, but I had those. But anyways, um, here we go. Jane Feather, Husband's Wicked Ways. Four and a half stars. A con consummate storyteller, Feather tries new heights in her latest wicked novel of intrigue and desire. Her utterly engaging characters and suspenseful plot combine to hold you spellbound. Widowed Oriel Farman lives quietly in London with her six-year-old daughter. She is content but restless. Then Colonel Sir Granville Falconer arrives with a letter from her late husband that decloses that he was a spy. First stunned and then intrigued by his words and her inner strength, Oriel accepts Granville's proposal that she help him unearth a cadre of Spanish spies in England. She passes each of his tests with flying colors and realizes she has a flair for espionage. They keep their mission secret with a pretend courtship that flares into an intense passion and a marriage to protect Oriel. But she isn't safe from danger as they come closer to exposing the enemies. And while I have tons of Elizabeth Boyles, I do not know why. I do not have this one. And I went ballistic trying to find it. And I didn't find it. I'll, um, Confessions of a Little Black Crown. I have the red one. I don't have the black one. Go figure that one. Um... Four and a half stars. Let's see if I can get it there. Um, a staple of everyone's wardrobe, the little black dress is the key and Boyle's delightful love story with a modern twist. The author showcases her talent for humor, intrigue, and passion in this keeper. Theo Langley and her sister make the mischief, including breaking the American pirate Dashwell out of a prison. But when Tally loses her luggage and is given a trunk, holding an alluring black gown, she finds real trouble. Secret agent Lord Harkin has been assigned the task of killing Dashwell. Disguised as the vicar writer, he heads for a house party where she's sure to find the Langley sisters. Some matchmaking and overwhelming attraction thrust Tally and Ryder together until Tally discovers his charade. Now she must find a way to hide Dashwell throw Larkin off the track, and keep from falling in love. But those aren't her only problems. Larkin doesn't want to kill Dashiell, who was his friend before the American became involved in the War of 1812. Plus, he needs to find the woman who owns the black gown to expose a ring of French spies. A bit of ma madness and mayhem ensures their romance takes unexpected twists until the chilling climax. Um...
Monica McCarty. Highland Scoundrel, four and a half stars. Told in the present and through flashbacks, the conclusion to McCarty's Highland trilogy is a fast moving, emotionally intense, and heart wrenching love story filled with unexpected twists and a romance to make your heart sing. Duncan Campbell, the lad's illegitimate son, and Jeannie Grant, the marchioness daughter, fall in love and plan to wed when Duncan is called to fight the British. When the Scots are betrayed, the battle becomes a killing field, and Duncan casts as a traitor. Flees to France after learning both his sister and Jeannie's grandmother will not sanction their marriage. For ten years, Duncan is known as the Black Highlander, an honorable mercenary and fearless warrior. Though a condemned man, he returns home to find Jeannie and clear his name. He and Jeannie rekindle their love, and clan leader Archie the Grim believes in Duncan's innocence, but he must unmask the traitor as the truth is slowly unveiled, and the lovers find power in their bond. A new world opens, allowing them to defeat their foes. I like to get this here. Um... Jackie D'Alessandro, Tempted at Midnight, uh, four and a half stars. The, high, the hugely talented D'Alessandro returns with another installment in the Mayhem in Mayfair series. Humorous, heartwarming, sensual, and exciting, her story combines the allure of the vampire novel with the hijinks of a delightful heroine and a stalwart hero. At her wit's end, in need of money and her wealthy husband, Lady Emily Staffelford writes a sensual novel with a female vampire heroine, latest selection of a lady's literary society. Rejected by publishers, Emily decides to engineer interest in her novel by posing as a vampire. London buzzes with talk about appearances of the mysterious woman, making it possible for Emily to sell her novel. However, American businessman Logan Jensen is suspicious of Emily's doing. Though he's plagued by unexplained accidents, Logan is distracted by Emily. Once caught in her charade, Logan plans to use it to his advantage. But falling in love is not part of the plan. And now both Logan and Emily are in danger of losing more than their hearts. Liz Carlisle. Tempted all night. Uh, I just searched. Four and a half stars. Carlyle's name is synonymous with unforgettable stories, brimming with humor, poignancy, and delectable love scenes and engaging characters. Add to this some touches of suspense and you have a breathtaking read to cherish. She's always going off. She's always going off. Bing, bing. Bing, 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 bing. Uh oh. Bing, bing. Nope, just one? Okay. One time mercenary and spy Tristan Talbot Lord Avonville is enjoying every minute of his scandalous retirement until his dying father convinces him to investigate a notorious brothel possible connection to a Russian spy ring. While he gets ready for his mission, Lady Fendora Northampton begins an investigation of her own into the disappearance of her maid sister. She follows the clues into London's treacherous underworld, where she collides with Tristan. Sparks begin to fly from the moment they meet, and the prim and proper Lady Faye is thrown for a loop. Uh, Mary Balo. Then comes seduction. And I talked about these in my last video, I won't go through them all again. I'm just going to do this one. Um, was first comes uh, marriage. Uh, then comes seduction. We talked about these in the last magazine review. At last comes love. Oh, it's this one. Um, then comes seduction. Four and a half stars. Baylor's Huxtable Family Trilogy continues in a story as sensual, powerful, and as wonderful as, as any the author has created. As always, the author masterfully writes characters who steal your heart and stories you'll cherish long after you sign, sigh with satisfaction in the end. Savor this one. B. 
Beautiful Catherine Huxtable feels blessed once a stroke of fate lifts her family from obscurity and places her within the ton. Then before she unknowingly becomes the object of Jasper Finley's drunken wager that he can conduce, conduce to seduce an innocent. However much a rake he may be, Jasper is drawn to Catherine and before he knows it, he's in love and she's attracted to the danger he represents to her reputation. Then, when a scandal develops in Jasper's family, he needs a wife, and Catherine is his choice. But he'll have to seduce her into his bed and his heart before she agrees. We will be doing Sky later this year. Um, this is book five in Hetar, The Shadow Queen. Five, four and a half stars. Small is not only queen of erotic adventure historicals, but the fifth book in the World of Hedgar series. She's like a grand mistress of erotic fantasy. Like her famous heroine, Sky O'Mary, Lara is an unforgettable, strong, and sensual woman whose adventures will captivate readers with this newest story. When her husband, Magnus Hawk, dies, Faye Laura must become the queen shadow of terror and guide her young son as ruler. But she also desires... Is a, she also a desirable woman with strong needs and chooses her friend Prince Kalik of the Shadows to be a companion and one of her partners. Together they work to hold their world safe from the machinations of an enemy who also threaten her children. Lara cannot rescue her daughter from being sexually enthralled by their enemy. Jonah the Lord High Ruler nor prevent her twin sons from a violent feud that could splinter their kingdom and destroy what she has worked for in terror. Lara can, however, fall deeply in love with Kelly and meet destiny head on with him at her side. Uh, Joe Beverly, The Secret Wedding. Uh, deliciously, uh, this is four and a half stars. Deliciously wicked, sinful, seductive, and filled with a blend of witty repartee adventure, and the return of a few characters from previous books. Bailey's second novel in her secret trilogy also features the independent Tabitha, the cat rabbit of hens. This one, fast-paced and captivating read. Ten years ago, Lieutenant Christian Hill came to the rescue of Dorcas Fraggett and was forced to marry her. He signed the marriage papers as Jack Hill and each went their way. Now the new Viscount Christian is puzzled when he hears that someone is looking for Jack Hill. Kristen was informed of his wife's death years ago. Dorcas was told the same thing and wants to know if Jack is alive or dead. When they accidentally meet, Dorcas thinks Christian is a relative of her late husband. Pretending to be cat hunter, she leads Christian on a merry and dangerous chase, which he thoroughly enjoys. Okay. Ah. I can read this magazine for hours and hours and hours. One more. I just had it. So it sparked my. Here we go. The Treasure Keepers. Um, four and a half stars. Readers fell in love with Ab's dragon, dragons in the Smoke Thief, and the infatuation continues in the fourth book in the series. Complex, enthralling, and captivating. Abe's enthralling and captivating. Abe's enthralling and captivating storytelling has you soaring through adventures and spellbinding seas made possible by the power of love and the forces of magic you'll believe in these fabled creatures and let your imagination take flight sorry treasure keepers Inspirational. Uh, beyond this moment, this one right here. 
uh, four and a half stars. Comfy, pull up a comfy armchair. The main and secondary characters instantly become people to care about, and the plot twist will keep you turning pages long into the night. Themes of racial tolerance and second chances are as timely today as they were back in the early days of Colorado's history. To end a scandalous rumor, Dr. Molly Whitcomb is forced to leave her career as a university professor and take a job as a school teacher in Timber Ridge, Colorado. She reinvents herself by lying to cover up past mistakes. Sheriff James McPherson hates liars and senses something isn't quite right about Molly, but he ignores his instincts to listen to his heart. What will happen when James learns the true reason Molly moved to Timber Ridge? Um, uh, find it. I didn't write it down. Not here. Why do I have this under? Oh. Um. It was nice of me to write the page down. Damn. Ah, that's right. All right, let's see. Oh, come on, Chrissy. Oh, here it is. All right. Stephanie Grace Watson. Best book right here. Ah, three stars. Whitson creates more than a story. She brings readers into a family. Her latest novel is a comfy read that draws on the threads of friendship, trust, love, and boundaries. Readers will enjoy the earthy characters whose personalities leap off the page. Although the storyline is a bit predictable and the ending abrupt, the book has enjoyable small town feel and lively characters. Maddie O'Keefe is on the run and scared. Her latest confrontation with Jonas forced her to flee Deadwood where she hopes to live with her brother Dylan, but hopes fade when she learns that Dylan died, leaving behind nothing but her letters and the deed to his claim. Determined to survive, Maddie learns the ways of gold mining and discovers that sometimes trust is the key to survival as she makes friends. Maddie realizes that life is better until she meets Reverend Aaron Gallagher. He has the voice of a preacher, but the characteristics of a gambler and a shady past. Interesting. Mainstream fiction. Uh, Susan Mallory, four and a half stars. Uh, the heartwarming novel about family connections, love, and following your dreams perfectly shows up Mallory's beautiful writing. It will invoke emotions from tears to laughter. Fans won't be able to put this one down. Megan Green seems to have it all under control. She's a successful accountant and has two great men in her life, her fiancé and her father, but soon she realizes that neither of them are the men she thought they were. When her high school boyfriend, Travis, comes back on the scene, Meg is inspired to mend her relationship with her estranged sister and revisit dreams of her future she'd all but forgotten. And... Gotta be here. Um, it's not a concept. Game, major, failure, question. Nope. Then where was it? Oh, I hate this. It's here. It is here. 
I'm not seeing it, and it's in front of my face. All right. Sunset Bay. The way we were. Marsha Willett. The Devil's No Friend of Mine, J.D. Mason, four stars. The Lost Hours, Karen Wright, four stars. The Ocean Inside, Jonah McMahon, four stars. The Next Best Thing, Deidre Berry, four stars. Kiki Swinson playing Dirt. The Wind Comes Sweeping, Monica Preston, three stars. Thanks for the Memories, Celia Ahern, three stars. Heart, Windless Summer, it's not here. It's listed. It's listed as being reviewed and it's not here. Let me just. Well, I picked it out, so I'm just going to read it because I don't see the, the review here at all. I just read them all, right? And I don't see it. And it's. Um. I don't see it. Cheryl Woods, The Inn at Eagle Point. It's been years since Abby O'Brien Winter set foot in Chesapeake Shores. The Maryland town her father built has too many sad memories and Abby too few spare moments thanks to her demanding Wall Street career, the crumbling of her marriage and her energetic daughters. Then one panic phone call call from her youngest sister brings her racing back home to protect Jen's dream of renovating the charming inn at Eagle Point. But saving the inn from foreclosure means dealing not only with her own fractured family, but also with Trace Riley, the man Abby left 10 years ago. Looks good. I don't know where the review is. It says it's here. It's only on two pages. There's no page missing. All right. So, Jade Leap, the Dragon Bound, right there. Um, four and a half stars. The seductive and dangerous magic of dragons returns in the follow-up to last year's Dragonborn. Gifted Tella Lee defectly unfolds her tale by having the chapters alternate between past and present. Emotions run deep from these perspectives for psychological scar scarred protagonists, and the world they face is unforgiving. Sabrina, fate as a dragon maid, was sealed when she was 10 years old. Hatred for her parents, who effectively condemned her to er early death and madness, is the first emotion that Sabrina shares with the terrifying copper dragon. Over time, a unique bond develops between the enslaved dragon, Cardin, and his reluctant servant, one that even defies the power of dog, Rachia. Yet years later, evil dog Rachel is finally destroyed. Cardin's soul is trapped in Dogra's body, determined to find the drag man and answers. Sabina tracks down Cordin, only to discover his memories damaged. Okay. Let's see. Allison Brennan. Sudden death. Right there. Four and a half stars. The line between sanity and madness is indeed thin in Brennan's latest psychological driller. One reason why Brennan's tales are so disturbing is her ability to create utterly chilling villains. With plenty of twists and turns, this perverted revenge tale is both unsettling and suspenseful. FBI agent Megan Elliott suspects that she is a serial killer on her hands when she makes the link between several victims being an all X Delta Force when the military claims up and confiscates a body. Getting the evidence she needs won't be easy. Ex Army Ranger Jack Kincaid runs a soldier for hire group based in Texas. When one of his colleagues is murdered, Jack goes looking for answers and finds Megan. And uh, Heather Graham. Sometimes I wonder why these are all in romance when they're listed as paranormal. Oh, where am I? Oh, yeah, here we go. Heather Graham, Nightwalkers. 
three stars. Graham plays the story supernatural anger for chills and chuckles, and it works mainly because Ringo is the ghost to come along in ages. The romance between Jesse and Dylan has some charm as well, but the resolution of the mystery isn't as successful. Entertainer Jesse Sparhawk is a habitual gambler, but she's desperate enough for money to try her luck at Casino. She wins big only to have Tana Green, who has been literally stabbed in the back, fall on top of her, pinning her to the craps table. He dies seconds after whispering the one word in her ear, Indigo. Interesting. All right. Now we're up to mystery. Deadlock. Iris Johansson, Deadlock, four and a half stars. Even the kindest people can be driven to vengeance. Artifacts expert Emily Hudson hungers for it. It doesn't take long for Jansen to toss her unsp unsuspecting heroine into a horrific situation. From that moment, in, the pace is lightning fast and the cat and mouse game is completely lethal. Readers won't soon forget either the enzymatic hero or the monster's villain. Part of a UN mission, Emily Hudson and her assistant Joel Levy are in Afghanistan gathering priceless artifacts from a museum. When the convoy is attacked, only Joel and Emily are kept alive. Their abductors aren't terrorists, they're mercenaries on a hunt for a legendary treasure. Although Emily insists she knows nothing about it, Vicious Stoughton tortures Joe horrendously. When the CIA contracts ex-mercenary John Garrett, he succeeds in rescuing Emily, but her need to kill Stoughton burns in her heart. Despite himself, Garrett is soon caught up in Emily's terrible, dangerous quest. And Lisa Jackson... All right. Malice. Four and a half stars. Lisa Jackson. Oh, look at that. Um, Rick Ben's being gaslighted or his ex-wife Jennifer truly back from the dead. Jackson turns her focus to the complicated life of the dogged, stubborn detective in the twisted tale of revenge and murder that oozes jealousy and hatred, but it's also an introspective story. Jackson pours on the physical, psychological suspense as Bent must feign his own failures and guilt. Since working, waking from the freak accident and coma that nearly killed him, New Orleans police detective Rick Bent hasn't been the same. Still on disability, Rick starts to wonder if his mind is playing tricks on him. When he woke up in the hospital, he thought he saw his dead ex-wife, Jennifer. He then receives a package of pictures of a woman who's dead, ringer for Jennifer. Someone must be playing with him, but why? Carolyn Hart. Dare to die. Four stars. Hart's long-running Death on Demand series brings readers another su superbly written mystery a featuring Annie and Max Stalling. The quaint sea island of Broward Rock has more than a share of secrets and a crime committed years earlier comes back to haunt the current residents. Top-notch suspense and several red herrings keep readers guessing until the dramatic conclusion when Annie and Max gather all the suspects to uncover the truth. Annie, who runs the Death on Demand Mystery Bookstore in Broward's Rock, South Carolina, loves a good mystery, so she's intrigued with it when Iris Tilford arrives in town on a bicycle in the rain. A former resident who fled after two of her high school classmates died tragically, Iris has returned to set things right. But some of her former classmates are not happy to see her. When Annie invites Iris to Darling's party, she never suspects that one of the island's residents will do her in. Hey. Anne Perry. Execution. 
Four stars. Perry continues her Victorian London series featuring Police Lieutenant William Monk with a subject that would be as repugnant in 1864 as it is today, child pornography. The mystery is complex with many startling facets as this brilliant series continues to explore new layers of Monk's personality. As superintendent of Thames River Police, Monk desperately wants to close the case that haunted his predecessor. Durban up to the day he died, it involves a child pornographer who runs a sex ring of young boys. Monk realizes that capturing Jericho Phillips is the only beginning of a much deeper mystery with far-reaching consequences. With the help of his wife, Hester, and Scuff, a young lad he's befriended, Monk delves into the deprived world of child abuse. Ugh. All right. Now, we're up to my favorite section of the magazine. Let's get to it. Oh, I missed that one. Let me see if I have it. Oh. Um, no, I don't. Thought I did. Oh well, I don't have it. <sighs> I used to. I have here that I have it, so I don't know. Uh we'll skip it for now. Um and I don't have that one either. I was kind of upset that I didn't have that one. Alright, let's get to it. Rebecca York, Eternal Moon. The Determined to Stop a Madman Who's Already Killed Three Women, P.I. Renata Condona is an undercover when she's threatened by a pack of vicious dogs. A lone wolf saves her and then swiftly disappears. Then out of nowhere, Jacob Marshall materializes, and with his electrifying touch, she suddenly knows the truth. Jacob is her destiny. It says, in a new twist on her long-running paranormal moon series, York adds an ancient battle between the powers of good and evil. As always, York delivers engaging plot with dynamic characters. Definitely one of the best. Four stars. And that is so good. I was going to say something about it. But I didn't know. Oh, I know I saw it in here. All right, we'll come back to it. Oh, there it is. Um, Edge of Hunger, Ryan and Bird, four stars. Ryan and Bird. Uh, Bird easily makes the jump from category fiction with the launch of her darkly enticing primal instinct. She does an excellent job setting up the par perimeters of her world and introducing a host of fascinating characters. Hang on, this is going to be a thrilling ride. Having been estranged from her now deceased mother for years, Ian Buchanan is in no mood to listen to the crazy yet unattractive woman who claims to be in contact with his mother's ghost. Psychic Molly Stratton was warned that Ian would be a hard sell, but the circumstances are so dire she can't back down. What Ian's mother never fully explained was that her bloodline is supernatural and that Ian's dark dreams are because the Merrick post portion of him is coming to life. Centuries ago, the Merrick fought the evil Koso who were banished but not destroyed. Now Kuso has escaped and plans to kill Ian and knows he lives unless Ian can accept his Merrick side. I gotta get better at this. Um, oh, I don't have that one either. Uh, I'm almost positive. Darn it. That would have been a good one. Um, I know I have it someplace. Alright, we did these last year. If you want to see my full review of all these books, please check it out last year. Um, I did Carolyn Sparks, and I did Lindsay Sand. Um, so The Immortal Hunter. Four stars. Sands picked up where the role kind of left off. Once again, she creates a wonderful hero who is truly to die for and an interesting, strong, and intelligent heroine. 
There's plenty of action, some humor, a continuing mystery, just enough sex, and more characters whose stories are eagerly awaited. Now, read. please go back and do my Lindsay Sands videos. I did about 15 of these, and they're all connected, and I explained how each one of them is connected. Um, when Daniel McGill and her sister are kidnapped by a group of rogue vampires, De De Decker Arjuna and his companion rescue Danny, but one of the rogues gets away with her sister. Decker realizes that Danny is his life mate, but all she can think about is finding her sister, and they have to go rescue her. You got to go check out the, the video for that. Um, the Secret Life of a Vampire and uh, the, the Roman Dreads Nesky. These guys drink synthetic blood. Um, in the wonderful addition to Sparks Vampire he Stories, the hero is not perfect, yet he fits the heroine who is strong enough to buy stand up for herself. The solution to the mystery is surprising and adds a nice twist to the fast-moving tale. You got four stars. As the son of Casanova, GMO, Demons of HK, Jack should have no problem romancing women, but he doesn't seem to have inherited his father's suaveness. When a bachelor party he's at attracts the attention of the police, he meets Officer Lara Boucher, an attractive mortal he finds cannot be controlled with vampire powers. When Lara gets involved in the investigation of a missing college girl, her prime suspect is Jack, but soon they're working together to solve who's apparently a series of disappearances. So you check out, I also did these last year. Um... You're So Vain, Christine Warren, four stars. With a deposition of a worthy Rottweiler, Ava Markham is no sweet retiring miss in the novel of others. Warren piles on the humor as two people used to getting their own way go head to head. Even though her close friends have all become part of the other world, Ava has clung to her antagonism toward all those she calls monsters. So it's highly ironic that Ava falls victim to a rogue vampire. Vladimir is on a special assignment from the European Council of Vampires. When he stumbles across a vampire attack, although Ava was drained by the rogue, she managed to bite him and now is undergoing the change. Dimma gives Ava his blood to ease the transition. To say that Ava is torqued when she awakens at, is a major understatement. Being part of a world she despises is bad enough. Having deranged vampire princess demanding her allegiance takes the cake. Ugh. Ilona Andrews, Magic Strikes, four and a half stars. Kate Daniels' terrifying her heritage comes into focus in this blockbuster of a third book. Andrews' crisp dialogue and layered characterization make the gut-wrenching action of the first-person thrill ride all the more intense. One fascinating element of this series has been watching the lone heroine forced into making emotional connections. D devotees of Kate and Kern will be saving every word as this mesmerizing tale unfolds. Kate should have known she was heading for trouble when she tried to discover that her teen wolf sidekick Derek was involved in. He wanted to rescue a girl from the illegal no-holds-barred midnight games. When he's found almost beaten to death, Kate becomes rabid. Complicating the matter, Derek and Jim have been working on investigation out the Beast Lord Kern's permission. Kate is caught in the middle, determined to avenge Derek while trying to stay a step ahead of Kern, who continues to keep her sexually off-balance. Then things go from bad to horrifying when Kate learns the exact nature of the evil plan at work. Deadly Desire. This is a whole series, and um, Riley is a shapeshifter. She's also a part vampire. She's part a few different things, and she's also a police officer, sort of, kind of, that, uh, whatever, paranormal police officer. In the first person travels, travails of assassin Riley Jensen, there's always plenty of kick butt action and scorching sensuality, but as a woman and as a guardian, Riley goes stronger and more complex with each outing. However, her life never gets any easier. For once, Riley, love life is stable with Vampire Quinn, but because she's half werewolf, it's possible that she'll someday find her wolf soulmate. Things heat up for Riley when 
gets involved with two violent murders that may or may not be connected. A powerful sorcerer has raised a zombie and two hellhounds to kill local teenagers. As Riley tries to trace sense and clues, she keeps tripping over arrogant werewolf bounty hunter Kai. These were good. I enjoyed these series. Um, and, uh, Curse the Dawn, Four and a Half Stars. Readers are in for a truly riotous ride in the latest Casey Palmer novel. Chase adds plenty of twists and obstacles in her first person series that blends time travel, magic, vampires, and more. The pace is rapid and the exploits are wild. New sort of pisser Cassie is a bind. She never got any training for this dangerous new job, and now the god Apollo and her mage Silver, who should be welcoming her, both want her dead. Certainly her allies are the Vampire Senate, which includes sexy master vampire Mr. and the mysterious mage Pritkin. When sabotage causes catastrophic damage to the mage stronghold, Cassie fears that eventual Apollo is trying to break through to this dimension. With all the varying agendas of the supernatural parties, telling friend from foe is tricky. Okay. I don't have it. I used to have it, but I do recommend L.A. Banks. Um, they were... Um, or she had a, a vampire police force. Milita military police force. Um, Undead on Arrival. The intensity and pressure continues in the Crimson Moon series as this brisky paced supernatural races toward its climax. When Shadow Wolf and Special Agent Sasha Trudeau help orchestrate a detente between various fractions of the supernatural world, she hoped it would lead to peace. But the cast was high, high for her mate, Max Hunter, who is slowly succumbing to the demon tape. To save her mate from madness and execution, Sasha hunts for a cure. How did I? Didn't I? I went over there to get this. Oh, here it is. Oh. I knew I got it. Some Girls by Chloe. I love this series. I really, really enjoy the Chicago Land series. Got four and a half stars. There's a new talent in town, and if this debut is any indication, she's here to stay. Not only does Neil introduce an indomitable and funny heroine, her secondary characters are enormous, intriguing, and make terrific foils. While the tone of the first person Chicago Land vampire series starter is generally light, there is an undercurrent of danger. Oh, yeah. Um, which Ethan. Ethan Sutherland is the lord of, um, the house. What is her name? Merit. Um, there's a whole series of these books, and then now there's a second generation of their kids' books. There's a whole series. This is a really good series. It's really interesting. Vampires, witches, fays, fairies, all these, and politics. It's, it's really good. Grad student Mary's life shifts radically when she's attacked. A vampire rips at her throat, but she's saved in turn by master vampire Ethan Sullivan of Caden House. Chicago vampires have only recently announced their existence, and the populace is adjusting. Not thrilled that she had to say no say in her turning, Merritt is certainly not one to bow and escape, which explains why she inadvertently challenges Ethan and kind of wins. But her family gives her a really hard time, too, so it's... Uh, a very interesting series. I really enjoy it. So that's the end of our... I mean, I could talk about these forever. There's quite a few books that I don't have. And um, I'm mad at myself for giving them up. I think that's all. Yeah, that's all the books. So, um, and all the Holocrains. You might want to check some of those out. We'll just go here like this. My, I know my everything is pretty bad. But maybe you'll be able to see a few. And the Cheryl Woods stories that I couldn't find. Um, this is really, you cannot find a better magazine. Um, I've read these, I don't have them anymore. Tall, Dark, and Deadly. Uh, 
sexy, very sexy, very erotica stuff. Um, I don't think Laura Lee. I didn't even look to see. I probably have it. Naughty intentions. Um, let me just look over there. Oh wait a minute. I think they're all Laurie Foster. Yeah, I think those are all Laurie Foster. Um, Naughty Intentions, Four Stars. The Naughty Boys are back in Lee's latest, which is heavily seasoned with suspense. Major Alex Jensen has wanted Jane McKay since she was a teen. When he saves her from sadistic father, they both hope that her life will return to normal. Original Janie wants to know what it means to have a man, and Alex is the man she wants. And Fern Michaels. Up close and personal. This magazine, I hope, I hope you'll be able to find some authors in here that you've not heard of before and to go check them out. Um, uh, we do have some adult, you want some adult books. Um, and J.C. Burton. I used to have those. Those were a motorcycle series. All the heroes rode motorcycles. Um, Molly Hopper. That's the book I couldn't find. I know I have it. I used to have it. Um, was that in Paranormal? Yeah. Um, it got four and a half stars. Nice girls don't have fangs. This absolutely hilarious first book is what is sure to be an amazing new series. Jane is in every girl with a wonderful sense of humor and quick sarcasm. Add in the mystery and the romance and you have a must read. Jane Jameson is your average librarian with the love of books. Rather poor personal life when she's mistaken for a deer and shot. But all is not lost. The handsome Gabriel Nightingale comes to save her life by turning her into a vampire. And that's that one there. So, please hit the like and subscribe. Let me know I'm doing a good job. Flashback Mondays. And Star Trek Fridays. And my new series, If Them. If you like this author, maybe you like that author. We started with the Briggertons. If you like the Briggertons, maybe you like the Mallorys or the Sherbrooks or some of the others I brought up. And then we did, um, if you like Patricia Cornwell and some medical uh, uh, autopsy-based series. If you like cats, we did a cat thing. If you like bookshops and bookstores, we did that thing. So I've got a whole bunch new planned. I got some sci-fi coming down the road. So please check it out and please hit the like and subscribe and let me know I'm doing a good job. Thank you.